Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm taking a look at another one of Bandai's absolutely awesome 30 minute missions kits. This one right here being the Spinatia Commando type. And as usual, this video right here, as always, would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want one of your own, link is down there in the description. So as usual with these 30 minute missions kits, they're meant to take you around 30 minutes or so to finish. So what you get inside the box isn't a huge amount of plastic, but it is, as we've seen multiple times before, engineered so nicely. We've got a grand total of seven runners in here, separated into three different colors. That is the black, the red, and that nice eye-catching yellow green that goes in the head as the kind of sensor or eyes or whatever. It's cat-shaped. As usual, the build of this is super, super simple as we've seen across this line so far. All the elements of this, the upper legs, lower legs, feet, arms, torso, head, everything in here is compatible with every other kit so you can mix and match the parts. The joints here are simple, mainly C-clips at the knees and the elbow, and it's ball joints pretty much for everything else. We do have some polycap balls, but we only use four of those, two in the torso and two in the hips. Again, as always, the assembly in here is super simple, but very, very effective. So jumping straight into the aesthetics here, and this is the same basic Spinatia that we would have seen before. Now, this is without any of the armor or accessories attached. This is what we've seen before, just in a nice red and black. We'll mention that this is the commando unit, which would have came out almost in tandem with the one that we saw last, which was the Spinatio army type. So I'm kind of seeing a little bit of a Zaku green on the army type, and this, I guess, is the Shar Aznable kind of suit if, uh, Shar Aznable was some kind of magical girl or something like that. So jumping into a bit of a size comparison, there it is side by side with the last kit we would have seen, which is the Spinatio army type, and there it is side by side with a typical sized 1 44th scale Gundam, which is the exact same scale these guys are in, and that, of course, is the entry grade, Oryx 78 2. And next up, there it is side by side with a couple of random high grades I pulled off the shelf, which is the Build Burning Gundam, high grade that is, and the high grade Gundam Barbatos Lupus. But yeah, once again, the plastics on here are very, very nice. The black is a kind of semi-gloss, and the red is an almost matte, which looks very, very nice. We also have that cat-shaped visor in the head, and I guess that's all we can really say about this particular kit before the armor is attached. So let's get it slapped on. So now jumping into the accessories, and here is the Spinatia commando type with absolutely everything that it comes with. Just like we would have seen with the last few Spinatias or Spinatios, what we get with the core unit is a set of armor for attaching onto it, as well as some weaponry, this time being a arm-mounted long-range weapon, as well as a knife and a shield. Besides that, we do have a couple of extras in here. That is some alternate hands, some alternate joints, as well as some alternate shoulders for if you do not want to display this with the shoulder armor attached, so it shortens them so it looks a little bit more natural. And attaching on the armor is exactly the same as we would have seen with every one of these kits so far. That is, they just attach into various places like clips on the shoulders, some little slots in the head, and a bunch of 3mm holes all around the body on the Spinantia. We have C-clips for these very, very interesting side-skirting armors which have a lot going on. And once you get all of this attached, this has changed it from looking like one very basic bot to something with a completely different vibe. Now, this to me almost looks armored like a knight as opposed to a commando. This looks like something that would look great in a nice metallic or a chrome. But as for the red that we get in here, it is matte and it looks great. So now moving on to the weaponry and the main weapon we have in here is the arm cannon. So just like the rest of this kit, this is in a nice matte red. It is only in the one color. It's made out of three parts. That's half, half and a barrel for on the end. Now, when some weapons are put together half and half, you do get a wicked seam line down the middle, like something we would have seen recently. But I noticed Bandai has actually adapted this into the design of the weapon, slightly widening the seam a little beyond the seam in order to make it look like it is part of the design. And that kind of works quite well. This feature is three millimeter peg holes on either side, so you can attach stuff onto them, extend the weapon if you want to, and to attach this onto the Spinatia, you can really stick this anywhere there's a hole, but the suggested place is the arm because it is the arm cannon. It attaches on like so, rock solid, and it does look great. So inside of the manual, Bandai does give a couple of alternate builds for this kit. One requires the Spinatio, or should I say Spinat, yeah, Spinatio, that's the one, army type, and the other one right here doesn't require anything but this kit, so let's give that a bit of a go. 
So the alternate build suggests using the knife as a little bit of a double adapter for attaching the waist armor onto the arm and then attaching the cannon onto that. So what we end up with is a big armored looking heavy duty cannon arm. This I really do like. This side skirting armor is very variable and very, very nice. So far, loving this kit. The next weapon we have in here is the only melee weapon or close quarters weapon we have and that is the combat knife. This is exactly the same as we saw the last time with the Spinatio army version except it is in this kind of reddish color. I'll also mention that in the instructions it mentions that you can attach both of them together like a kind of scissors but what this sadly can't do is what a scissors does best or some kind of wrench or whatever this is meant to be and that is close. So this will not close up if you build it like we've seen in the instructions. To use this as usual it just slides on into the holding hands like so. We've got a left and a right standard holding hand and when it comes to the right hand we do have one optional extended angle one. So if you want to have some cool slashing poses you can use this one. We'll also mention though there is only two backs of hands in this kit even though we do have a grand total of five hands. So you do have to swap off the backs when you change the hands. This knife does have both pegs and a hole so you can store this when it's not in use. You can pop it anywhere there's a peg or a hole and I'm just going to go for the side skirting armor like this so it's within easy reach. So the last piece of equipment we have in here is a pretty simple shield. That is pretty flat in the front with two three millimeter holes and around back we've got one peg and one hole. This is exactly the same as the shield we would have seen with the Spinatio army type just in red instead of green and you can see the nice design of these means that you can actually layer them on top of each other like so to make a longer almost carapace kind of shield. Pretty cool. You can attach this onto any three millimeter hole anywhere or onto a peg. I'm just going to go with the back of the arm because it is the simplest place. It attaches on perfectly, looks good, looks defensive. And I will mention there is one piece we do remove off the waist unit during the attachment of the armor, which is this little black piece. So I'm just going to stick it on the shield because it looks like it'll be pretty good for a decent shield bash. So finally, a little bit of a note on the articulation here. As we've seen on both of these Maxion Forces mechs, that being the Spinatio and the Spinatia, these have ridiculously good articulation. It's almost like they were built for articulation. Every joint on this pretty much gives you the absolute maximum you could ever expect from a joint. Everything is extremely nicely engineered and for the most part it's plastic on plastic joints. We do have some poly caps at the waist and the torso which can be a little bit funky at times but never really all that bad. And the whole thing will pull off pretty much any over the top pose you want out of this. Now if you do want to see more about the actual full articulation on a Spinatia, you can check out one of my older reviews like this one right here. It will tell you everything you need to know. But there is one extra thing I will mention about this particular version of the Spinatia and that is these are some really cool side skirts. They can do a whole lot and add a lot of nice bulk to the mecha. These can swing up ever so simply on the front and back so they never get in the way of any of the crazy kicks to the back or to the front. This is a very very nice design and the overall design of this kit right here is extremely extremely cool. So anyway that right there is it for the review and just like I've said with all of these 30 minute missions kits to date this is absolutely fantastic and what I've showed you today is only scraping the surface because that is what comes in the box. Besides that, if you buy a whole bunch of these guys, you can put them together in any way that you want. There is some crazy combinations that I've seen out there. Like I've said so many times before, this is literally Mecha Lego. That and the fact that a lot of the parts in here are compatible with high-grade Gumpla. A lot, not all. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Mecha Model Kit reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video and none of these videos would be possible without each and every one of you watching these videos, including those of you who are supporting me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Van Fon, Org59061, Lawrence C Hack, Kill Me Inc., Joseph Kukluk, Joe, Gunpla UK Limited, Global Frequency Studios, Forsetti, Caleb Engelhart, and Craig Jerry.